Hello, I would like to welcome you to our information session for families attending Children's Disability Network teams in County Louth and County Meath. My name is Rosemary Hutchison and I am the Children's Disability Network Manager for the North Louth team. I am presenting this information today with my colleague Anine Willemse, the Children's Disability Network Manager for the Navin team on behalf of all our colleagues across Louth and Meath. The vision for progressing disability services is clearly outlined. Families of children and young people with complex intervention and support needs will receive the help they require to support their children to reach their full potential. There are six children's disability network teams across Louth and Meath. The teams are based in Dundalk, Kells, Drogheda, Dunshockland, Navan and Trim and provide services to families of children with complex needs within a geographical area known as the Community Healthcare Network. Specialist services and supports will be developed across Louth and Meath and specialist areas may include clinics for feeding difficulties, for management of motor difficulties, for children who require specialist seating and postural management, and for children who present with behaviours that challenge. The Children's Disability Network team will have links with their primary care colleagues, with child and adolescent mental health services, with the Fa Child and Family Agency TUSLA, with the Preschool Support Service, and with schools, which will include ma mainstream schools, special classes and special schools. Why do we need PDS? PDS provides a clear pathway and fairer access to services for each child with complex needs based on their need, not on their diagnosis or where they live or go to school. PDS provides for teams to work in partnership with families and others to support children with complex needs reach their potential. PDS ensures that teams make the best use of the available resources for the benefit of all children and their families. Let's look at the key principles of PDS. The following 12 principles and values provide the basis for the model of service delivery for children's disability network teams. Accessibility. Families should know how to access information from the teams and the information provided should be clear and concise. Services should facilitate families within a physically accessible environment. Accountability. Services should follow the national policy guidelines and comply with legislation. Services should have written policies and procedures. There should be a process for families to provide feedback and evaluate the services provided. The biopsychosocial model. Services should focus on all aspects of a child's and family's life, in particular, their lives within their own communities. Clinical governance and and evidence-based practice. Services will use current best practice guidelines and keep up to date with ongoing research into childhood disability. Cultural competence. Each family's cultural differences and diversity should be recognised and respected. Early identification of needs. There should be a clear pathway for entry into the services, which is clearly understood by parents and other referrers to ensure timely referrals. Equity of access. There should be equal access for all children and families based on the need and not on the child's diagnosis or where they go to school. Evaluation of outcomes. There is a need to set clear goals and review the goal set and to have formal and informal evaluation methods. Family-centered practice is the cornerstone of PDS and we will look at this principle closer in the next slide. Inclusion of children and young people in their communities and providing programmes that develop a child's independence 
and promoting participation in everyday activities in their homes, their schools and communities is key. Interdisciplinary teams working, working together to ensure that a, a, the number of professionals from different backgrounds work with the child and family, sharing information and developing goals together. Staff are valued and respected. Staff members who are well motivated and happy in their work provide better care and support better outcomes for children and families. One of the key principles of PDS is family centred practice. Family centred practice is an empowering approach that focuses on the whole family and not just the child requiring support. Family centred practice recognises that parents know their child best and want the best for their child. It recognises that all families are unique. They have their own values, structures, beliefs and coping styles. We know that the well-being and development of children is dependent on the well-being of the family as a whole. Family centred practice ensures that the supports provided to the families are developed in partnership with the family and are based on the family's priorities. How will this affect you and your family? At the moment, we are in the process of transferring children's files to their new teams. Going forward, your child's services will be provided based on the principles of PDS which we have just looked at. Some children may not require services from the Children's Disability Network team and they may be discharged from the team or they may be referred to the most appropriate service. For example, some children with mild cerebral palsy who only require physiotherapy may receive this service from primary care. The services your child receives will be based on the goals and priorities which you have identified at your individual family support plan meeting. To tell you more about the individual family support plan and more about PDS, I'm now handing you over to my colleague Anine. You may have heard of or have even been involved in talking about an individual family support plan for your child. To do this, the team will be talking to you about what is going well and what's not going so well. From that, they will be asking you and your child, if your child's older, what is the most important thing for you at this time? It will not be enough to say that your child needs speech and language therapy because we can't effectively measure the impact of that. And if you do not get loads of therapy, you may feel that you have failed your child and you would become frustrated with the service. We all miss the fact then in the process that your child in the meantime has learned to call you and their siblings by name. The other reason for being very specific about what the goals for your child is, is that for most children with complex needs, just intervention or support in one area alone will not make the difference it should because everything is linked. For example, in order to say words, your child needs to have enough breath support to physically speak. If they have a poor posture, it impacts on their breath support and thus on their speech. Similarly, to learn words, we match the words with objects, but a visual matching is an issue then learning new words become harder. Or if your child has difficulty with paying attention, it impacts on their ability to learn. So we want to know what specifically you want your child to get better at at this time, so we can all measure if the input worked and to know exactly what we need to provide to get there. We will look for functional goals. Ultimately, we all need to function in everyday life. Getting a child to stay seated in a therapy room does not mean they can do the same in school or in the cinema or at a family dinner in a restaurant. We are going to agree the goals with you. 
You need to guide us on what's important to you and we need to share what we know and have experience in. So together we can identify the steps needed to reach the goals. And we have to highlight the things that we all need to consider while doing this. Once we have reached the goals, we will review them and set new goals. Just a bit more detail on this functional goals I'm going on about. What are the areas of child development that we need to focus on to promote child and family well-being, happiness and quality of life? Your child's relationships with others that they see regularly, re regularly, feeling connected to parents or siblings, preschool staff or school staff. By feeling connected, this will result in your child having a sense of belonging. For your child, the feeling of taking part in things, participating in singing nursing rhymes while they have circle time, lining up to go out on a walk, participating in playtime in the yard with their peers. Your child will feel that they are participating and this is hugely important in terms of your child feeling they belong and also to build their confidence and self-esteem. Child also needs to learn to do things by themselves as much as possible. To, in other words, they have to develop their independent skills. For example, your child learning to communicate by themselves using pictures or sounds or words, or learning to eat and drink with less assistance using a beaker, a cup or a spoon, or even learning to dress themselves with less and less assistance. We will focus on these key areas of development wherever your child spends most of their time. Your child is in our service due to having additional needs. These care areas of a child's development are also the core needs of all children. Are these core needs we discussed, your child needing relationship, feeling like they're participating and belonging, becoming independent. Are they any different to the core needs of children who do not have additional needs? No, they're not. They are the same core needs as children without additional needs. The only difference is that your child needs to practice developing their skills in these areas every day and often. Part of the focus of the CDNT is to support you and your child and others that's involved with them to feel confident and competent in supporting your child throughout the day. You will be allocated a key contact while receiving intervention and support. During waiting times, you will be provided with details of how to link with the service should anything change for you and your child. The key contact is there to be the main link between the team and you as a family. You may not have assigned therapists as before. Different professionals will be delivering different pieces of work. For example, you may be attending a group to teach you as parents some skills and how to manage behavior at home. This can be presented by team members that you do not see for any other reason. You may then see one person to review feeding in the feeding clinic and a different person for some individual therapy sessions but your key contact will be one specific person who will link with the whole team on your behalf and they will share information from you with the team and vice versa. A family folder will be provided to all families going forward. This folder will contain basic contact information about your service, as well as information about how the team works. It also highlights a few policies that impact on how we work and that is important for you to know about as well. The idea is that we are as transparent as possible in how we work and to prevent any unexpected surprises. We've already mentioned that intervention and support will be provided to each child based on goals identified during the individual family service plan. The intervention and support we're talking about will be a mix of universal, targeted and direct intervention. Universal intervention or support 
could be information we may share with you in a leaflet, for example, toilet training tips or contact details for a specific sports group in the community that you can join. It can also be a short webinar about a specific topic, for example, how to prepare my child to start school. It can also be a group like Parents Plus, which we run a formal group over a number of weeks to go through parenting skills to help educate and support you as parents to manage difficult behaviour and address parenting conundrums. Universal supports can also include upskilling teachers or preschool staff so that they can help your child. Targeted interventions are aimed more specifically to you and your child, and there is some overlap between these and the universal supports. Targeted supports can be specific therapy groups for children or parents and will include advice and review clinics. Direct intervention would be specific assessments or therapy sessions and may also include feeding review clinics, orthotic clinics, etc. Unfortunately, there will be times when you are waiting for certain interventions or supports. You may, for example, be waiting for an autism diagnostic assessment to be completed, or you may be offered a specific group, but the places on the first group is already taken and you have to wait for the second group to run. There will also be times between interventions and supports where we need you and your child to practice and bed down the skills you have learned so that we know if you've got this and that you're not struggling. We may provide some phone support at this time if needed. Our resources are limited and if we have any gaps in services due to the time it takes to recruit new staff, it also impacts on waiting times. We are doing everything we can to advocate for more resources on an ongoing basis and we recruit as fast as we can but sometimes things just are out of our hands too. Thank you for your time and attention. We look forward to working with you and your child in the future.